Okay, moving on, we have the first of two double acts um, today, uh, next up. So uh, we're going to talk about the topic of using standards to secure the digital product lifecycle. And it's uh, great to welcome uh, Altaz Valani and Rob Akashok. So Altaz is the Director of Insights Research at Security Compass, and he conducts ongoing research in the software security domain. Prior to joining Security Compass, he was a Senior Research Director and Executive Advisor at Infotech Research Group, providing trusted advice around application development, application rationalization, agile, cloud, mobile, and the SDLC. Other past positions include Senior Manager at KPMG and other positions working alongside senior stakeholders to drive business value through software development. Altaz is currently the Vice Chair of the Open Group Security Forum, a member of the Safe Code Technical Leadership Council, and also sits in industry working groups at IEEE, Cloud Security Alliance, OASIS, and the OMG, where security, DevSecOps, and privacy challenges are being discussed with broad global impact. So welcome, Altaz. Um, joining Altaz is um, Rob Akashok who is the uh, IT Management Architect at DXC and co-chair of the IT for IT Forum within the Open Group. Rob helps IT organizations to transform to become a lean and agile service provider, ready to manage the new digital ecosystem consisting of a hybrid cloud and multi-vendor sourcing landscape. He's architecting the new IT organization, combining standards, practices, and concepts, such as IT for IT, TOGAF, Scaled Agile Framework, DevOps and continuous delivery and security management with established IT service management methodologies such as ITIL. He assists IT organizations in their automation journey, covering the entire IT value chain, including portfolio management, the DevOps tool chain, including CIDC, CICD, um, test management, monitoring and event management, risk and security management, ITSM, OMDB, cloud orchestration, et cetera. So we're in very good hands this morning to hear about using standards to secure the digital product lifecycle. Over to you, Altaz and Rob, welcome. Thank you, Steve. All right, thank you very much. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please, Rob. So thank you everybody very much for allowing Rob and me the opportunity to present today. We believe that there exists uh, a gap in the industry today that helps to bridge security and digital delivery. And the use of standards to achieve this integration represents a tremendous opportunity for the open group to influence and to make a difference in how we're able to uh, help organizations balance this need for both uh, speed of delivery and security. And this will come up a number of times in our presentation today. Insofar as the presentation goes, there will be four parts to the presentation. We will start by looking at the broader context. Uh, in particular, we will highlight the security and risk challenges in a digital ecosystem. And then we will turn our attention to describe practices in a secure digital operating model. And in this part of our presentation, we will talk about this idea of a digital product backbone that natively incorporates security practices. And what we will do is walk through a use case of the recent Log4j vulnerability to demonstrate how something like this can be useful. At the end of this presentation today, we will describe uh, a joint initiative uh, that's taking place uh, between uh, the security forum and the IT for IT forum in helping to create a security reference architecture. And at the end of this, we'll open it up. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, Rob and I would be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. Next slide, please. Now, when we examine current security practices, it's common to see something like this. So broadly speaking, we have preventive, detective, responsive practices, and there's some kind of an overlay around development and operational activities. The preventive controls are, are typically exercised at the earlier stages of software delivery, 
and we see a, a push towards the left of more and more security activities. During the development process, we uh, also engage in a number of security tests that help us to detect vulnerabilities prior to deployment. And these, uh, the combination of these uh, preventive and detective controls operate both on the development and operational side. So at the bottom of the slide, you will see we've even got infrastructure elements. Uh, so we typically see infrastructure as code and a lot of as code activities uh, today. Uh, normally what happens when we look at DevOps, it is uh, the delivery mechanism is done through these DevOps pipelines. And they're essentially an integrated set of technologies that enable us to automate much of the uh, CI CD pipeline. And finally, we have uh, all the way to the right, these responsive practices. And these are typically executed based on some kind of a stimulus that, that requires remediation from a security perspective. Um, and this really overall represents where we are today in a number of cases. Now, the challenge with this type of model is it misses out on several other contexts. So for example, how do we propose bridging the gap between security and delivery teams? Uh, we could slow development down, but that's not going to work. We could ignore security and that's not going to work either. And so this brings us now to our next slide. If we could go to the next slide, please, Rob. So really when we look at security and digital delivery, there are multiple stakeholders that we need to consider. Uh, here we've highlighted four groups, two at the executive level, two at the practitioner level. And we've highlighted some examples of where these groups might fit in and what are some of the, the common roles that we see. So we're gonna drill down a little bit deeper now and show you the model that we've developed uh, within Security Compass that we're open to sharing. Next slide, please. So within our own efforts, uh, we've probed further and this is what the security executive persona looks like. Uh, we found that they are focused largely on formulating the right controls in order to reduce risk to the organization in an auditable way. You'll notice that their focus is on a higher level of abstraction here. Um, so the intent is to come up with something that uh, allows risk mitigation organizationally. If you go to the next slide, please. When we look at our security practitioners, the focus for a security practitioner is largely on identifying threats and attackers. And the intent is to try and look for ways to engineer mitigations against these threats and ultimately thwarting any kind of effort uh, for malicious actors. Uh, but you'll notice that there are a number of different concepts that converge when we talk about a security practitioner. Uh, and the intent here is if you look at, at, at what they're uh, finding important in terms of their day-to-day -day activities, um, they're looking for evidence, root cause analysis, a number of these things. Next slide, please. And then when we now take a look at the tech executive, uh, the tech executives typically being our CIOs or CTOs, uh, they're focused largely on processes, run books, infrastructure, the ability to construct an auditable way to ensure that when we have to report back to the business from a security perspective, that our infrastructure and our technologies are in fact secure. And we provide assurance from that perspective. Next slide, please. And uh, finally, when we get to the tech practitioner, uh, the tech practitioner are where we see a lot of our DevOps engineers and their focus is on code, on deployment of software, uh, looking at the infrastructure and uh, ultimately trying to figure out what is the best way for us to go in and to insert uh, security as we go through our delivery pipelines. Uh, and this is, this is what we're going to talk about where the convergence of these two is occurring, but there isn't a simple way to go in there in terms of an architecture or a framework that would enable this to happen. And at this point, I'd like to hand it over to you, Rob, to, to explain a little bit in more detail, now that we've got an overview of where the challenges sit, um, where do we go from here? So over to you. Yeah, so the next step, I would like to take you through a short journey of what we see as uh, initial draft ideas about the security reference architecture. As you probably also know that many organizations are currently 
changing their digital operating model. They look at how do we deliver value, generate flow, automate, streamline activities. And here you see an example of, you know, looking at the end-to-end -end value streams. And in IT, we have multiple value streams, but one of the key ones, of course, how do we deliver from an idea, getting something in production, for example. Um, but what you see is that we have different practices that people starting to use nowadays, like TOGA for the enterprise architecture, uh, agile frameworks for development and, and like SAFE, as is from a skilled agile perspective, agile development, DevOps, site reliability engineering. And we still use ITIL for a lot of service management practices, all about continuous planning, continuous delivery, continuous operations and continuous improvement and leveraging IT for IT, for example, to, to basically fuel your, your digital operating model. But the challenge that we see now is that how can we incorporate security and risk management practices into these primary uh, delivery models? And you see there's a whole range of security practices out there. It's, it's a very fragmented and isolated tooling la uh, process landscape as well as a tooling landscape, by the way. We have risk management practices, security management practices like testing, like OWASP. There are many regulatory frameworks for, for controls like COBIT and ISO 27000. Uh, there is now initiatives for zero trust. There is NIST uh, as a good example for security, cybersecurity and incident management. And the challenge that we see nowadays, there are so many controls, policy frameworks we need to implement. There are many different security and risk management practices, but now our goal with the security reference architecture is how can we incorporate all these best practices and codify that into an end-to-end -end digital delivery model? And that's why I would like to uh, basically give an example of how that would work in a end-to-end -end delivery model. And here you see an example of how does my digital supply chain uh, looks like uh, from an end-to-end -end perspective. And this is basically how organizations are currently looking at their digital delivery model. They have portfolio backlog management, their source code development, testing tools, uh, change management, monitoring and security somehow needs to fit in. And I would like to show you how does the security management capabilities and model fit into this overall model. It seems, by the way, that we have an old slide pack here. Uh, so maybe what I can do is share my own desktop. So we have the latest uh, version, if that is okay. Uh, can I do that easily to share my own screen? Yes, of course, Rob, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, just let me know if you uh, can see my screen again. Okay. You see here the digital supply chain, yeah? That's good. Okay, thank you. So basically what I was saying, we, we have a digital supply chain. You see here some of the key building blocks, if you will, based on IT for IT, what you need to run a digital organization. Now, let's take an example of how security practices and, and uh, basically components are embedded into your digital delivery model. Let's assume uh, we, in, we would like to introduce a new product or service, and it could be like a new business opportunity to improve our customer journeys, or maybe we need to replace or consolidate something. But let's assume we're going to create a new digital product. A key element in a digital life cycle is that we have a single registry of all our digital products. And in the past, we call this an application portfolio, maybe, but now a digital product portfolio, tightly linked to our enterprise architecture capability. So we can identify this new digital product, who owns this product, where is it linked to in our business process model, what data is managed there. And of course, there is a moment in time that we're going to basically mobilize a new team, a product team and a product owner that's going to build this new product in incremental ways, like it could be an MVP first. And here you see that we, we create the backlog in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a basically in a product team backlog. We have the CICD pipeline that needs to be set up. There is requirements and design still generated. And, and here, this is the, one of the first steps to mobilize this team, leveraging uh, continuous delivery tools, for example, to populate that. Now, one of the first security and risk components that we need to address is risk management. Many organizations have not really implemented a good risk management capability. They do risk assessments in Excel, but it's not always tightly linked, as in this example, into your portfolio of digital products and your architecture. So what we need is a solid risk management capability where we can address like uh, security impact assessment, privacy impact assessment, vendor risk impact assessment against my product linked that to what how does this product enable my business process what data what what are my user community what technology components do i use and out of that we basically need to generate what kind of security controls and privacy requirements are needed for this specific product 
And you don't do that once for the life cycle of a product, but you continuously evaluate that, of course. And, and one of the key challenges that we face is that there's not often real traceability about these non-functional requirements like security requirements, uh, like, uh, for example, or data privacy requirements that we now identify this application has uh, data privacy, data privacy issues. So we need to make sure that the team backlog, because all the product teams work from their backlog, that security and risk stories are logged in the product backlog here so that we can basically track and trace, have been designed, have them be tested, and are is the application a product compliant, as an example. And then we're starting basically to continuously develop that. This is more like the continuous integrations flow, as you can see here. And you see here some new security components that we need to address in, in this reference architecture, as an example, for example, code quality scanning. How do we scan uh, against our code quality policies and controls? Uh, there could be secure coding standards that we apply, and they're tested and validated by our quality code scanning tools. Uh, of course, security testing capabilities like uh, static code, uh, static security testing, dynamic penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, and a key element in a digital pipeline is our build repository. It's basically where all the formal builds are stored and, and certified. And typically we have something what is called the software component analysis tool that validates the builds, for example, from license compliance, maybe known vulnerabilities of components that are part of this build because a lot of third party libraries are part of your software build. So here we're trying to secure the CICD pipeline and integrate into the overall product and team backlog, the test management and the security related aspect. And of course, we, when we, we move in that space of continuous delivery, where we continuously deploy something to a test environment and a re acceptance and production, then we need to integrate our deployment capabilities with our built repositories. We do there, then additional security capabilities come in place, uh, basically part of that deployment value stream, like secrets management. Where do we store our credential certificates? How do we ensure that maybe the pipeline or deployment tools get privileged access to deploy our server components? Uh, it's linked into identity and access management, as an example. Uh, we have uh, basically the whole cycle of development tests and, and check uh, and change management controls. And when something is deployed into an operational environment, whether it's test or production, hopefully we can automatically update the CMDB that we know what has been deployed where, and maybe also validate that through discovery. And then you see some additional security components that we need to implement, like security monitoring. It could be log analytics, vulnerability scanning, uh, configuration compliance, validate whether the configuration that we deploy is compliant to our policies and stays a compliant endpoint protection as an example of components, and there are many more. And as you could see, after that, of course, when we detect issues, then typically we have a security event management component with threat analytics and response. There could be automation part of that for automated remediation, uh, like security run books that are automated. And of course, if we cannot fix it directly, we need to raise an incident, a security incident response plan, security incident management capability. And as you could see here is that you built up a kind of a framework of IT delivery model with the IT for IT capabilities and what kind of security related capabilities and components do you need? And this is, we're still working on that with, uh, with the team to create a security reference architecture, but this is more like a high level illustration. The key element of our uh, reference model will also be the data model uh, because data is a key element in our, uh, basically part of our digital delivery. And uh, aspect of the key element there is the digital product backbone. Do we have a good understanding of what are the digital products we have, like a portfolio of products, who owns those products, what teams are involved, but also how does this enable my business value streams, my customer journeys, uh, what data does this application or product consume and use, what interface do we have, uh, what technology services are used, and so basically our software bill of material we're talking about here. And, that, and basically that reference model is needed to the right risk assessment, understanding their design and compliance. A lot of organizations don't have a single digital product portfolio management uh, capability where we say there's a single place where all the digital products are maintained with the product ownership. And that's very crucial for managing this new digital economy because we need to understand where are the teams, which pipeline do they use, where is the product backlog for each of these products so we can continuously provide traceability and automation there. 
So that's a key element. Um, I will not zoom into that much detail at this moment, but let's take an example of log4j to illustrate a bit this, this kind of a, a draft uh, security reference architecture. Now, probably you've heard, heard about log4j as a, a, a vulnerability that was identified. Now, this, I will use this as an example, uh, plotting that to, the, to some of these capabilities. Uh, you've probably heard about it because that's been uh, one of the most significant security vulnerabilities that have been identified the last months. And thousands or not hundreds of thousands of applications are affected with hundreds of thousands of servers where this vulnerability was identified. And the and this vulnerability, when once this was running on a server that is exposed with, a, let's say, a web app, a Java application running on it, there was the ability for hackers to insert malicious code and take over, you know, execute code on the servers where this application is running. So that's a critical issue here. Now let's see how this uh, currently organizations are using to think about how do I resolve these kind of issues? Basically, it's the whole value stream of a vulnerability detected to resolution. Now, typically, how are these vulnerabilities identified? You see that on the right side. The good thing is that we have a public vulnerability database in the market, so where all these vulnerabilities are uh, identified and basically typically our monitoring tools like a vulnerability scanner or an endpoint protection tools uh, they are connected to these vulnerability databases and they get fed immediately. There is a new vulnerability, let's say log4j in this case. Where do I see this running, this component in my infrastructure? So this is a very reactive way, of course, but still it's very essential because now we identify the vulnerability not known before and we detect that. So then all the alarm bells will you know, go off. There are security threats and alarms. But then the key challenge will appear and that is which applications or products and product teams need to fix this? Because we can I maybe have thousands of servers and some organizations have really 10,000 of servers where this problem is, is, is identified. But let's say we have about 1,000 servers identified where this log4j is running. And I can assure you there's many applications that had this. And then we need to identify from a server which product team is managed, what application is running there, which product team and product owner do I need to notify? Because the only person that can fix it, we go to the product team, they need to rebuild, deploy that fetch into the environment. And that's our key challenge, right? Having that single product portfolio, understand the resources, IT resources, the software bill of material used by this product, and where is my team that is accountable for this specific product? And that's basically where we need the feedback loop for we identify something, we identify the product, we know the product teams, we send basically to the product backlogs. Uh, think about Jira or Azure DevOps. They create the, the stories in the backlog and immediately start working on this to fix this. And they will download the latest version for Log4j, for example. They're starting to build and integrate that. That could be done in a short period of time. And then we have our uh, basically checks here from a security perspective. In this case, our built repository that I mentioned before, it is scanned and said, yeah, it's now fixed. This component is not vulnerable anymore. Typically component scanning and testing, and then uh, basically based on the green light, I can start to deploy the patch into operations, into the different environments and done by the different teams, by the way. And then we can hopefully uh, resolve this vulnerabilities for this specific application and then continuously for the other applications as well. And this is really a race against time. And the challenge that many organizations have is that this is not a fluid end-to-end -end value stream. We have a lot of components in place in many organizations that could be vulnerability monitoring, the security instance management system, Jira and Azure DevOps backlog, deployment tools. But what's missing is this end-to-end -end glue of how this should be organized. So many organizations now realize that this end-to-end -end value stream for vulnerability to remediation is not optimal. They don't have a good reference architect to look at the data flows and integrations needed. Uh, they miss a good product portfolio where we identify what are the products and what resources are used by this product. So this is one of the uh, basically issues that I identified that they realize we need to work on a security uh, improvement of our security management framework, basically. And basically that is what we are aiming for. Can we provide a security reference architecture streamlining and automating these kind of end-to-end -end security value streams as part of our digital operating model. And then I hand over to Altas again. Great, thanks Rob. So it, we, we started off in the presentation talking about what are the uh, use cases, what are the, the personas, 
how do we look to integrate and, and move away from the siloed ways that we're operating right now? And then Rob has taken us through how we might integrate the various components from a digital delivery standpoint. And now when we look at an actual reference architecture, when we dig deeper, we find that from a security context, even when we take a look at vulnerabilities, there are many systems that may contain vulnerability information. It could be, for example, in a threat library somewhere. It may be in a GRC or a SIEM somewhere else. When we consider uh, where do we have our, our threats and weaknesses, they could be in some kind of a, uh, a GRC tool, or it might be tacit knowledge, or it may exist in emails. And herein lies the problem. We are trying to deliver fast and we're trying to deliver securely, but the way that we have our systems set up right now is that they're not fully integrated. Hence the need for a reference architecture that will bring these systems together, allow for bi-directional integration across these systems. And not just that, but if you take a look, for example, at a vulnerability, and eventually that vulnerability needs to be uh, addressed and you will end up with a control. How do we translate from a vulnerability to a control? It requires understanding the underlying data model of these aspects and bringing all of these things together so that we are able to now move them um, in an atomic way across these pipelines. Uh, and so we still have various folks in security and the digital delivery pipelines addressing their primary problems around delivery or security, but we, we we have the underlying backbone that brings all of this stuff together based on what Rob was talking about earlier. So this becomes a manifestation now of how we could go in and deliver uh, in a way that provides some level of assurance back to business stakeholders that we have in fact addressed security. Next slide, please. So here, this slide represents what we are planning to do from a security reference architecture perspective. First of all, the, the way that we're approaching this is to align with existing standards and practices. Uh, so for example, IT4IT, SAFE that Rob had mentioned earlier, um, ITIL, NIST, there's some good work that's been done. Uh, so we, we don't wanna take away from those efforts, we wanna build on top of those efforts. We also want to go in with the mindset that security is an enabler for the business, for the delivery, for value creation. Uh, historically, uh, security has been perceived as being a blocker, and so there are workarounds that are being created. Uh, we want to, to change that, and we want to, to begin to look at a reference architecture that is focused primarily on business value creation. And the way that we're planning to do this is by using use cases and scenarios. So at the beginning of the presentation today, we talked about four different personas, and there are others in the legal domain, in the compliance domain, but understanding what their problem space looks like, helping to drive out three things in particular. The first is a capability model. Uh, this capability model will enable us now to go and to bring this out um, in a way that, that maps these capabilities to value creation. Secondly, we wanna go in and take a look at a data and information model. How do these things integrate? How do we translate from one, uh, uh, one piece of data to another piece of data? Uh, and really looking at it from a risk and security perspective and looking at the relationships. And the third is looking at uh, security services reference model. So uh, when we consider security, we're looking really at a services-based paradigm where we have tools, we have an architecture where, where the required integrations are coming together to help us achieve what we're looking for. Uh, now, as we go forward with this, we will align certainly with other uh, emerging frameworks, other standards, and our next step is, is uh, really putting a small group of people together. Uh, we have this now, we are creating this, and then we will open it up uh, and um, uh, allow folks to, to provide some additional feedback uh, on how we're proceeding with this. Just round tripping this back again to how we opened the presentation today. To the best of our understanding, this doesn't really exist today in the industry, trying to come up with this kind of a security reference architecture. And so it, it it provides a great opportunity for the open group to take this out now. And with that, uh, I'll ask for the next slide. And I believe we're in the Q&A portion at this point. So we welcome any questions that people might have. Thank you. Altaz, Rob, thank you very much.
um, great stuff, really great stuff. And for me personally, it's great to see uh, uh, an initiative between uh, two different forums of the Open Group. And I think uh, you know initiatives across forums are, are going to be a, a key part of putting together the digital framework that we need um, uh, across the Open Group. Yes. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, it's great to see. Um, and just a, a, a quick point for those watching, if you want to see, um, particularly relevant for the panel later, but if you want to see both Rob and uh, Altaz at the same time on the screen, if you click the layout button that's on your screen and go to go to um, grid, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Um, but uh, we'll see that may not work until the slides are removed um, from that. So. Let's uh, let's go to the um, questions. So um, you talked about the personas at the beginning. If I can name this one at you first, Altaz. Um, the question is um, related to the persona slides. Is there any persona security context for business execs and business practitioners? Yes, absolutely. So when we look at business stakeholders uh, in the very first slide that we put up, which described uh, how we are doing security today, in many cases, the business context, the business personas are missing. Uh, and, and really, when we look at their perspective, it is typically focused on risk management. It is focused on compliance. It is focused on value delivery. Um, that is a very important use case uh, in terms of the persona that we need to inject into the security models. For far too long, security has been perceived as a technical activity, when in fact, it is much broader than that. So when we consider the use cases, we absolutely intend to inject into that the persona of the business stakeholder, along with what their concerns are around revenue generation, costs, management, uh, things like that as well. Yeah, and maybe to highlight as well, Steve, and Altas, is that uh, it's not just security in the, in the smaller sense, it's also risk and compliance aspects, right, for any digital product. And we even, when, like we talked about in the other presentation about sustainability, there could be that our business defines some sustainability goals as well, and it needs to be part of the delivery of digital, digital services. So it's about compliance policies, not a regulatory, it's, it's very broad, but anything that we need from a, almost like a non-functional perspective needs to be embedded in your digital delivery model is part of this. Uh, so we still have a, to find a good name, security and risk management, those together are we talking about, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So a um, uh, little bit unfair probably at this stage, because uh, I heard you say, Altaz, you've got a, a group of smart people together. Um, the security reference architecture looks like uh, a great development. Um, any idea on when you expect to see the first version? <laughs> We're on the hook for <laughs> a commitment. I hear you. I hear you. So we are really striving to have a draft up this quarter. Um, you know, uh, don't hold us to that, but this is what our intent is. Uh, we believe that this is such an urgent need in the industry right now that it behooves us to move very, very quickly to try and get something up. Um, and, and again, this will not be done in isolation. The, the, the group that is currently creating a draft um, will then open it up and others can come in and, and basically uh, provide additional opportunities. So, you know, people in the IT forum, people in the security forum, um, you know, others can, can come in and have a look at it as well and, and, and provide your comments and your thoughts on this. Um, so far in the discussions that I've had, even with other communities outside of the open group, this is uh, a top priority. Um, bringing together standards so that we've got these inbuilt best practices to help us develop a security reference architecture is in fact the right way to move forward. Uh, and what's happening right now, because of this gap that exists, there are these bespoke approaches appearing in organizations, um, you know, but it, it really needs uh, a thought around a standards based approach that helps us ultimately provide the assurance that is going to be necessary back upwards to the business. Otherwise, it will become opinionated and that kind of brings the objectivity of security down. Uh, so hence, that's another sort of area of, of what's impacting the work that we're doing. It's great to hear that that's the approach because that's that's the approach we always prefer at the open group is to, to use what's there and work on filling in the gaps or bringing them together kind of a standard as standards approach. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. very much looking forward to that. And um, of course, I won't hold you to it, Altez. 
of course not. Um, <laughs> so we do have a, there are a um, couple more questions come in. I'm going to save them for the panel session where we have a bit more time. I want to be respectful of people's break time. Um, meanwhile, gentlemen, Altez, Rob, thank you both very much. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen them, there are some uh, nice compliments on your presentation coming in in the chat. So thank you very much. It's been an honor. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you later on the panel. <laughs>